This week, not all bubble caps are successful. Panfan demonstrate that there is no such thing as overkill in Venal. The first Raiju is destroyed. Winter Coalition get in a pickle Eba A Poco. Panemic Horde are on the move. Red Menace Coalition and Stain Roost declare a ceasefire. An Imperium Blobs gets baited by Snuffed Out. Shadow lose their staging Fortizar in Cloud Ring. And a Dreadnought fight breaks out over a No Forks given Tatara. Hello Pod People, I'm Frost and this is your weekly EVE Online update. Welcome back. So as always, we start off the show by announcing the winners of the Scope Syndication skin, which at the moment is the Varga, that is the Marauder skin. Now, I only have one tune to show this week, which is Jabbar Scarab, uh, who is the only player to have come forward. Uh, I'm still waiting on Andrew P, that is your YouTube name, to get in touch with me so that you can win your skin. Contact me through my Discord, link is in the description below. All right, so let's get on with the news. Uh, we're going to jump right in. I'm going to jump up into my box as always, up in the corner here. I'm going to make sure my pen is at the ready. Yep, squiggles are good. And as always, we are going to kind of make our way around the donut. So we're going to go around all of the Nalsec space. And obviously, we're just going to spin around in the middle there with some horrible doodles. As I have a few things I need to cover in low sec as well. Right, so we're going to start off uh, in, of all places, Tinal, all the way up in the top here. Now, we don't normally cover Tinal very much. If I remember correctly, it's kind of Winter Co. Uh, renter space uh, and uh, also the home of Azure Citizens. Now Azure Citizens have been having some issues as you can see here they've had some carriers uh, killed by a gang of super carriers. So you can see over here we have a uh, Nordic from Volta and Dig Bick Asami in his uh, uh, drive-by Wyvern. Uh, on this particular kill now uh, if we go over to the other one uh, you could see Dig Bick again uh, and then Aquila, uh, Bitter Brave, and Gorky. Now, uh, this group have been harassing and uh, they dropped a whole bunch of supers and uh, they got caught in bubbles. And uh, normally what happens, as we know with hell camps, is a whole bunch of bubbles get dropped in, unless you're a Ragnarok and you're already out the bubbles before you want to realize. Uh, otherwise, you kind of get trapped. Now, in this particular instance, uh, they had some backup. So uh, they were able to call on some friends uh, these friends in this particular instance uh, were Test Alliance, uh, Please Ignore, and Pandemic Horde, who showed up in about 200 munins or so and killed all the bubbles and allowed them to get out. So if you're flying these big toys and you're kind of going in this kind of small gang thing with super carriers, it does help if you've got a lot of friends in some very big coalitions to come and help you out. As always with these videos, uh, I link them in the description below so you can go and check them out in your own time. Uh, I think I have a battle report for this somewhere as well. Uh, let me just double check. Let me just pause that quickly uh, and see. Uh, yeah, so you can see here uh, that basically, um, how many have we got? Uh, yeah, 235 um, tunes came to the assistance of these tracked supers. And so they were able to get them all out. Um, there we go. So that's kind of the news there. It's just kind of more of a, a side note. Uh, then we're going to go on to Venal. So with Venal, um, which is right here, which is NPC space, it's Garista's NPC space. Uh, if you remember, I've talked about this for a number of weeks now. Uh, Boss have been the primary group that uh, Panfam and CDOT in particular have been trying to push out. And uh, there's been this Fortizar in QHJ-FW, which has been extremely difficult to kill. And it's been a few weeks, and if you remember, I think it was last week, I actually demonstrated uh, how Boss and friends, most of these friends being a Greater Trash Community, a Brave Collective, uh, some of the other groups that have lived in this area previously, like Rogue Capel, Arcos Core, etc., have all kind of bandied together and actually put up a pretty good defense on, uh, I think it was the Armor Timer uh, the other week. Now, this week has been a very, very different story. So the Fortizar was attacked again. If I remember correctly, this was kind of the last Fortizar that belong to Boss. Boss have been dropping other structures like small stuff like Astra Houses and stuff. But this was the kind of the main Fortizar in uh, Vino. Now, I have three battle reports to show you because yes, it did eventually die. Now, the first one is the Shield Timer. And uh, you can see that we had our usual uh, contingent. So obviously Boss showed up, we don't have the biggest numbers, uh, assisted by uh, We Form Blob, We Form Volta, uh, Scum Lords, Quote Alliance, who are um, Greater Trash Community, uh, and then we have Brave Collective there in yellow as well. 
kind of making up the majority of the numbers. And then on the left-hand side, uh, we have PanFam, uh, which is NC Dot, Pandemic Legion, Slice, uh, Horde, <laughs> One Horde, uh, and Test uh, comes along to uh, help out with this as well. Now, as you will scroll down, you will see that uh, the defense was the defense that Boss had used previously and Great Trash Community had used previously, which was a whole bunch of carriers. Uh, but this time, as you can see on the left-hand side, rather a, quite a few Titans were dropped. And these Titans uh, doomsdayed the carriers of uh, Greatest Trash Community, uh, and they killed about 10 of them. It could have been a lot worse, and a few boss ones there, as you can see some chimeras that belong to boss. Uh, but yes, so basically these, uh, these Titans then basically forced the... Uh, the carriers to have to uh, withdraw from the uh, the shield timer and then as you can see the carriers there from NC Dot were able to kite over and do their thing and obviously we've got an Eagle fleet there from PL as well and a Munin fleet from NC Dot so a subcat fleet to support as well and some sabers there from uh, from Slice. So that was kind of the shield timer so as you can see uh, NC Dot and uh, Panfam generally wanted to make a statement we are going to drop loads and loads and loads of titans we're going to take whatever it takes to get this thing dead and so that's what we saw for the shield timer so then we move on to the armor timer now the armor timer uh, some resistance was put up uh, by um, by uh, the usual groups so great trash community brotherhood of spaces and brave collective uh, and the friends of, of brotherhood of spaces this time the initiative showed up as well but what we had here was a very different situation because um, Test Alliance, uh, PanFam and Test Alliance and Fraternity showed up as well. Obviously Fraternity couldn't shoot the structure, but they were able to def help defend the attackers. Um, they basically brought 42 super carriers, 58 carriers, 118 rocks, 184 munions, and 114 eagles. So that was versus uh, 162 feroxes that were a mix of Greater Trash Coalition, Boss and Friends, uh, and then Great Trash Coalition also brought 30 Macarials, and then uh, Initiative and Brave came in Serbs, totaling those 155 Serbs. So all that basically happened is the Feroxes got chewed up. If we actually look at the summary here, uh, you could see that 159 of the 162 Feroxes uh, were destroyed. Uh, then the Serbs and the Max kind of, I think, didn't really engage too much. Uh, seeing they get the Feroxes being chewed up, and so therefore the, uh, the armor timer was completed. And so it got to then to the, uh, the final timer, which was the hull timer, which was literally just a couple of days ago. That was on the 27th, which was uh, yesterday. For me, that's Sunday the 27th. And uh, what we saw here uh, was an even stronger show of force um, against uh, a defense made up of a flycatcher, uh, Helios and a Velator, was there a Velator here? I could have sworn there was a Velator in there. Okay, it's not showing up here, but either way, uh, not the strongest of, um, of uh, uh, con contesting there from the point of view of, of boss. Understandable. Uh, and uh, basically all the toys came out from NC Dot and Friends, NC Dot, Pan Fam, should I say, and Test. Uh, and, uh, and I just did a quick little count. So we had 63 Titans, including one Moloch and one Vanquisher, 54 super carriers, including one Revenant and one Vendetta, 82 carriers. There was one Dread. So clearly the Dread is like the uh, the Drake of Capitals. Can I bring my Dread? So one pilot brought a Dread. Uh, nine monitors, because monitors always help win a fight. And the more you have, the more the chances you have to win a fight, apparently. Uh, and then 118 rocks again. And then just to make sure that um, they kind of had grid control and their they, uh, super capitals didn't get into too much of a pickle, I see 76 heavy, heavy dictors and 17 dictors. So, so yes, uh, like I said in the titles, uh, there was uh, no such thing as overkill from PanFan when it came to removing this structure. And so as far as I know, that's kind of the end of things now in Venal. I don't know uh, whether the, the uh, remaining Astra houses, there's two or three, I think, potentially still kicking about that Boss dropped quite recently, whether Boss are going to continue to, uh, to do this and continue to harass in the region or whether they decide to do something else. I did see, actually, they took uh, some sob. I think it was up in Tino. Uh, I don't think I mentioned it. Yeah, there we go. So Boss actually managed to take an iHub in Tino. So you can see it looks like it's already reinforced. Uh, yeah, it's, oh no, it's not, so it's invulnerable. So they're actually still holding the uh, the iHub up there. So it'll be interesting to see 
uh, whether they decide to start uh, harassing Saab up in Tinal instead. Okay, so next uh, we're going to go over to uh, Veil and Silent. So Veil and Silent, uh, the first bit of news is at the bubble camp of the uh, snuffed out capitals in 4-H. WWF is still ongoing. The bubbles are still there. To the best of my knowledge, there hasn't been a breakout attempt this week. It's all been quiet. So that means based on the count that I pro was provided to me by fraternity last week, uh, we still have 20 revelations, seven Naglafars, two Archons, three Thannies, and one Nyx still trapped in these bubbles. And the bubble camp is still going strong, apparently. Okay, the other piece of news uh, in Veil of the Silent, which is something completely different, uh, is if I actually go over to this, this is the losses for the Raiju. So the Raiju was the uh, AT prize ship for this year. It was the frigate. Uh, and basically, we one has now died. Only one so far. And as you can see, it died in Veil of the Silent. Uh, and I actually have a video of it being destroyed. Uh, and it is a very quick video. It's uh, click and you'll miss it. So you can see that uh, uh, various groups were involved. And as I understand, Frederick Von Hull was involved with this, but I didn't see his main on here. Uh, but you'll see why I think he was, he was involved a little bit later on. I haven't had a chance to contact him. Uh, what was interesting as well was a couple of AT ships uh, were involved in actually killing this Raiju. There was a couple of Kremoas uh, on grid as well. So here is the video. Uh, basically, the Raiju pilot jumped out of a wormhole uh, so he's just jumping in through the wormhole, uh, the wormhole now, and you can see all of these ships just suddenly just land on him. He's now scrammed, he's webbed, uh, the wormhole collapsed, which means no escape whatsoever, and suddenly uh, the ship dies, as you can see here, boom. And there you go, so that is a Raiju down. Now, as I understand from the group um, that were involved in this kill, uh, the pilot uh, that died belongs to Hydra, the team that won, and that was the uh, exit of their home system, their home wormhole system. And so apparently this group had been camping it for a couple of weeks, uh, waiting for a Raiju to pop out as they knew that these uh, ships were gonna be used quite heavily as they've only just been handed out just recently. So there you go. All right, so that is that. And uh, yeah, so one Raiju down, I'm sure we will see many more die later on uh, <laughs> as time goes by. Also, as a side note of this, there was a forum post, which is a bit of a meme, from Frederick von Hull uh, offering a permit in the same way as Code or, or Safety Dot used to do uh, mining permits. I don't know if Safety do mining permits, actually. I know Code used to. Uh, where basically, if you spend 8 billion uh, isk a month uh, 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 towards and give it to Frederick von Hull, he will not shoot your AT ship. So it's kind of insurance against Frederick shooting you. So uh, definitely a bit of a meme there from uh, Frederick von Hull. Uh, but good to see all the same. The options are available. Okay, then uh, let's go over to uh, the Forge. So, uh, as you know uh, from previous weeks in the Forge, uh, we have uh, constant um, activity going on between uh, Winter Coalition, Fraternity specifically, and Snuffed Out. Uh, these two groups have a grind to axe with each other. And so this time round, in the system of Obi, Obi being right on the border with Veil of the Silent, right here. Um, the uh, uh, Winter Coalition decided to send out a small group to attack a POCO that belonged to Snuffed Out. So that's a player-owned customs office. And I have a battle report here. And as you can see from the battle report, things did not go to plan with 60 billion lost to Winter Coalition versus 5 billion lost to Snuffed Out. Uh, and Capital Fusion, Capital Fusion flying around with Snuffed Out. And then the initiative showed up as well. I think they got called in uh, when things started going wrong. So as I understand, a small group, I think it was Zealots, uh, were originally uh, shooting the Poco. Uh, then a whole bunch of Snuffed Out Legions showed up. Uh, this then escalated with the Winter Coalition dropping Tempest Fleet issues. The Tempest, Fleet issue, Tempest Fleets uh, then ran into problems. So then loads of Apostles were dropped on grid. Mistakes were made and the Apostles died on the mass, as you can see here. And that accounted for the vast majority of uh, the, um, the losses on this kill board. I'm sorry, I just saw a random dread here again. So once again, it was kind of bring my dread uh, uh, moment there for that fleet, clearly. Although the, 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 the Bridget did manage to uh, not lose the dread. So that was pretty good. Okay, so 
And that is the story that although the customs office was killed, so from the point of view of Winter Coalition, objective achieved, right? At the cost of 60 billion. So now uh, I'm going to go on to something else and we're going to go over to uh, Caliva Calivala, Calivala Expanse, uh, which is right here. And the reason why the big news is, is that Pandemic Horde have announced that they are now moving their staging from R10 in Calib Calivala to Peregrine Falls. So uh, they're originally uh, here in R10, which is right there. And uh, they've now gone over to Peregrine Falls. Now, why Peregrine Falls? Well, there's a couple of things uh, to be aware of. The first one uh, is the system that they've actually picked is, uh, if I actually go into Peregrine Falls, here we go, there it is, is uh, they've decided to make their staging system MJ-5F9. Now, at first it's like, well, why this particular system? And the reason is, is because it has got a massive jump range. Uh, it is right in the heart of the drone lands. You can see it right here. And you can see that all the systems in red here are the systems that you can reach with a Titan bridge. So that's not even carriers, that's a Titan bridge. Uh, and if you actually look, that's 215 systems that can be reached. So that is a massive super cap umbrella. And as well as covering the vast majority of Peregrine Falls, so everything that's circled in white, it can be reached through a super capital uh, Titan bridge or with by super caps. Uh, if we actually go back, it then also covers pretty much all of Malpais, as you can see here. And then if we go back, it also reaches into most of the Calavala expanse. And then I think it also dips its nose into Ethereum reach. As you can see here on the right hand side, uh, it can also reach there. So it can then reach the jump bridge network with the Ansiblex jump gate network of Slice. Uh, and then it also peaks into uh, the Spire. As you can see here, it reaches just a couple of systems, but it's enough to obviously get them into the jump gate network. Uh, and then Owasso as well. And I think Owasso is the same thing. I think it's just a few systems. There we go. So it's just kind of the southwest down in that corner. So yeah, lots and lots of reach uh, for Pandemic Horde. Now, the one thing that is happening as a consequence of this was that, um, oops, not Calibala, uh, Peregrine Falls, is that Fraternity were still holding some, uh, some SOV. This is now being handed over to uh, uh, Pandemic Horde. Uh, in return, uh, Pandemic Horde are removing their SOV that they currently hold in Vale of the Silent. So that will be flipped over to Fraternity. So there's basically a handover of SOV being done and uh, Fraternity are busy moving all their stuff out of, uh, of Peregrine Falls. So there you go. So uh, R10 is no longer going to be the staging system. Also, I believe one of the things that it helps them with is obviously it moves them a little bit deeper into the drone lands, which means less uh, kind of roaming fleets coming in from Jita and all that kind of stuff. So it puts them a little bit further back, so it makes crabbing a little bit easier. Okay, so um, ba -ba -bum, what up next? Okay, so let's do the giveaway. Um, it's the end of the month, so this is probably going to be the last time that I'm going to be giving away these wonderful Varga uh, Scopes Indication Skins. I have two to give away. I'm going to give you a keyword, which I haven't even thought of at the moment. Uh, I'm going to have to think of one in a minute. Uh, and so the way you're going to, you enter the competition is you have to put something, uh, a sentence in the comments below, in the YouTube comments, with the keyword of my choosing, uh, which I'm really struggling on because I didn't give it any thought because I was so busy uh, doing this. So what can we do for this? Um, let's do overkill. Yeah, definitely overkill. So overkill is the key word. <laughs> Managed to think of one, thankfully. Uh, so that is our key word for this week. So make up a sentence with the word key, uh, overkill. Uh, you have until Friday the 4th of March at 1800 UTC to make your entry. Uh, and then I will do a random pick using a random generator. Uh, and then I normally announce uh, a reply to you in the YouTube comments and you can then claim your prize through my Discord by DMing me on my Discord. So good luck with that. Okay, now that awkward moment is over, I am going to jump back into my box where I feel nice and safe and cosy and uh, we're going to continue on. So uh, the first thing uh, I have to say is I haven't heard much from FIRE this week at all. Uh, for FIRE Coalition has been pretty quiet as uh, has, has uh, Triumvirate and uh, Slow Children at Play and uh, CVA who were over in Curse. I haven't heard much from them, so I don't really know what has been going on. Uh, so please uh, accept my apologies if I've missed something important. But to my knowledge, there's been kind of no major, no major fights going on there to the best of my knowledge. And I'm sure someone will correct me. And if they do, I will make sure to point it out next week. 
Now, what I do want to cover though is uh, the system of Esoteria, so the region of Esoteria. So that is the home of Red Menace Coalition. Uh, Stain Roos uh, being the group that provide the most content there for Red Menace Coalition uh, as they own this system here and all of these systems over to the left and then live in Stain as well. Stain being on this gate here. Now, a, uh, a fight did fight uh, occur in the system of Weetabix or X-7Bix, but I always call it Weetabix. Uh, it's right here. Uh, if you're not familiar in the US, I don't know if you have them in the US, Weetabix is a breakfast cereal. Uh, so in the system of X-7Bix, uh, there was a fight over an Astra house that belonged to Stainroos. Uh, and is this the right one? Yes, so here it is. And uh, the Astra house was destroyed. Uh, but the main things to point out here uh, was the fight was happening between uh, Stainroos, which are over here on the left, and actually Test Royal on their side as well, by the looks of it. I don't know if that's actually just the battle report that did that or whether that was actually a, an organized thing. And then in the middle here, we have uh, Red Menace Coalition. And then you can see that we've got, uh, let me circle it in yellow, we've got the initiative and the bastion kind of showing up here, but I have Goon Swarm separate. Now, why is that? Well, the reason why was that whilst all this was going on and um, these, um, uh, these carriers uh, were being killed by uh, Stainroos, uh, by these dreads, as I understand, uh, the Imperium then attacked, or Goonswarm in particular, should I say, attacked the Stainroos Dreads. Now, up until this point, um, I believe that uh, Goonswarm and Stainroos had an agreement that uh, the moment the Stainroos didn't uh, drop on their, didn't do blops on their crabs, on their, on their ratting uh, uh, tunes, then they would leave Stainroos alone. And I believe, it is my understanding, that this has been broken. And as a consequence of this, uh, Goon Swarm attacked the Dreads. So they bubbled them first, they brought in loads of um, uh, jack, uh, sorry, sabers and flycatchers, as you can see here, bubbled them all up, and then used Ishtars and Serbs uh, to attack them, and a few Dreads as well, but it looks very, I just saw they dropped a, a whole bunch of Dreads there as well. And uh, if you look at the kill mail, uh, here we go. So here's a random nag I picked and you can see there all the Ishtars having uh, done all the killing there. So there you go. So uh, that was the first piece of news that I had for Esoteria. The other piece of news I have for Esoteria is that um, due to the, uh, the real life situation that is going on at the moment, uh, Red Menace Coalition and Stainroos have agreed on a non-invasion pact that is going to last till at least the 11th of March. Uh, so no side is going to be dropping uh, structures in either space, nor are they going to attack either any of their structures. So they're just going to leave it to kind of roaming fights and that kind of thing. So, uh, so there you go. So non-invasion pact is in place until the 11th of March between Stainroos and Red Menace Coalition. Okay, on to other news. So uh, I'm going to talk about Delve quickly. So if you're not familiar with Delve, uh, with, uh, with regards to the way they protect their crabbers, is they do like to drop uh, Blops battleships as a means of protecting their, uh, their ratters. And I have a battle report here, uh, and you can see that um, a bunch of these Blops were actually uh, destroyed, uh, including a Marshal, uh, the Marshal being right here, uh, which uh, accounted for a big chunk of the uh, almost 18 billion lost. And uh, this happened because uh, they were baited out by Snuffed Out. So essentially a blue uh, Sino was lit. The blue Sino claimed that uh, they had something tackled and uh, these Imperium pilots jumped in and uh, were caught. So in fact, uh, sorry, wrong one, there we go. If I bring this up, you can see the legions all waiting here. Then as soon as the Sino was lit, uh, essentially all the blocks from the Imperium jumped through and at the same time uh, a bunch of legions and stuff from Snuffed Out dropped in and immediately started blapping all of the uh, the Blops battleships. Obviously the Marshal there got primaried first. Uh, they killed the, uh, the Blops battleships. Now there was also a Sino that died a little bit later. They tried to get a second Sino on grid so they could provide support to the Blops but it got there a little bit late by which time the uh, the Blots battleships had died and the legions just put all their DPS on that Sino that just landed on grid. So, very quick little video of this, only about three minutes long, but you can check it out. Link is in the description below. And this was from, a, like I say, a snuffed out pilot, as you can see with uh, the close up of the legion there. I do like the legions, they're awesome ships. Anyway, side tracking. Okay, uh, what else do I got? Uh, okay, then a, a cloud ring. So, in cloud ring, uh, I've uh, talked about this in the past, uh, that we have Shadow 
uh, Shadow uh, Empire, Shadow Imperium, Shadow, I forgot the name now, Shadow Ultimatum, there we go. So sh I just remembered the Shadow from like this Shadow, I don't know if you guys remember this, this is um, the, uh, the Interceptor from the, um, from the TV show and uh, they had a uh, Shadow which was the, uh, the protecting force. Anyway, uh, so Shadow uh, lost their staging for Tazar and O-ZX UV. So um, as I've mentioned before, they kind of have good relationship with uh, both the Imperium uh, in the South and Greater Trash Community in the North, that they're kind of left alone. But that doesn't mean that they're left alone by everybody. And in fact, the, uh, the group that actually destroyed the, uh, the Fortis as you can see here, the Fortis was lost, was in fact snuffed out with a bunch of dreads. So clearly these are the dreads that got out of the bubbles. Uh, along with a bunch of carriers, so they dropped a, a whole lot of capitals on them, as you can see, that's a lot of, lot of carriers. Uh, uh, Fraternity and Winterco did uh, show up uh, with some Munins and some Serbs, uh, but it wasn't enough to, uh, to protect the Fortisar. So uh, once again, those contacts, uh, Shadow Ultimatum showing they had <laughs> plenty of contacts being able to call on uh, Winter Coalition for some help there. Uh, so, interesting. Okay, so... Uh, Fortizar died and we're going to move over to Kor Azor in Low uh, Sec uh, because the battle I want to show you here was uh, between uh, dock workers, no, for no forks given, bad touch cruisers crew, scary wormhole people, etc, etc versus uh, Crunchwrap Coalition which is Deepwater Hooligans and of Sound Mind uh, with the help of Pirates, Lords of War and the kind of main groups there uh, and as you can see they were attacking the Tatara uh, of no forks given. Now it turned into a big dread fight. Now what happened was uh, that no forks given and dock workers committed first, started dropping in all their their, their uh, dreads, but unfortunately the Sino died, and it didn't look like they had a backup Sino in place, and so the, uh, the not all the dreads were able to to uh, Sino in. Uh, then uh, dread bomb, sorry not dread bomb, uh, deep water hooligans and uh, of sound mind. Pirate Lord of War dropped loads of revs. I mean, they totally outnumbered them because you can see in terms of dreads dropped. And so it was basically a massacre of the dreads that belonged to No Force Given and Dock Workers. On top of that, uh, I have them separate on the side here as local as primary. Uh, they, it looks like they came along uh, and they decided to bring loads of flycatchers and uh, just uh, whore on as many kills as possible. So they clearly decided there was going to be a cap escalation and brought loads of flycatchers. Uh, to get in on that fight there. So, uh, although it was in low sec, so I'm not quite sure what the, the, the plan was, the flycatchers. Unfortunately, none of them died, so I can't see if there was like some spooky fit going on there uh, because they clearly weren't going to be bubbling. So, you know, maybe they're just using them as straight tackle. I don't know. But anyway, maybe someone from Localist Primary can enlighten me because I actually remembered that you can't bubble in low sec for a change. Now, uh, I actually need to bring up Deep Water Hooligans. Uh, in fact, Dread Bomb I need to bring up because... Um, if I show you Dreadbomb very quickly, uh, you're going to see that they have a massive fall off in uh, their membership. Uh, and if we actually look at the corporations, uh, you will see that uh, I think it's about five groups, six groups. Uh, there we go. So Jump to Beak and the Burnouts, the Suicide Kings, Outback, Outback Steakhouse of Pancakes, which was the kind of the, the main uh, starting group of uh, Dreadbomb, and Guerrilla Gardening have all now joined Deepwater Hooligans. My understanding is that Sedo who was kind of the leader of uh, Dread Bomb has gone away for real life things. And so the corporations, these active corporations within Dread Bomb have merged into Deepwater Hooligans, having flown with them for the past few weeks, to be honest. They've, they've been doing a lot of stuff together and now they've decided to uh, completely join forces. So there you go. So a little bit of news there. Uh, then we have an unfortunate death. Uh, this was a gank. No, that is the wrong one. It is this, this one here. Uh, a prowler was destroyed, so there's a blockade runner, uh, was ganked in Kador. And uh, as you could see, the loss was uh, quite substantial with 109 billion lost, uh, with a drop of 73 billion isk. And that isn't even the total. I've got it linked here by, uh, by price order. As you can see, there's loads of officer mods on here, like a whole ton of officer mods uh, on there, as well as... Uh, Lots of others, kind of very juicy stuff. And then right at the bottom, uh, there was also a bunch of abyssal mods of which we have no idea of the price. Uh, but generally, if, you, if we're seeing loads of officer mods in the cargo, then these were pretty expensive. 
And as you can see, a whole bunch of them did drop out as well. Now, uh, what is interesting with this is the blockade runner can't be scanned. So uh, I don't know whether this was a lucky break from safety and they just decided to pick on this blockade runner and it happened to be like loot pinata uh, or whether it was uh, they had actually had some intel as to kind of what was going on. Uh, maybe some of those abyssal prop mods should have been on the, on the blockade runner, right? Were there any abyssal uh, 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 national stabs? Uh, no. No, unfortunately, that's what he needed. He needed some abyssal, abyssal uh, national stabs to uh, to get out of there a little bit faster, I think. Anyway, so there you go. So you're never safe in high sec, all right? Once again, another reminder. Uh, then I'm just going to finish off with this Nyx. I want to point out this Nyx, um, not because the pilot did anything drastically wrong. Uh, he was actually, as I understand, really, really careful. Uh, unfortunately, the player had been away since uh, 2015 and just came back into the game. And I just wanted to point this out because I don't know if you can see with this, uh, I mean, need to zoom in, uh, but this um, supercarrier had large rigs on it. Now, uh, prior to the Odyssey expansion, which happened all the way back in 2013, uh, that was when they introduced capital rigs. So this Nix has been alive since at least 2013, if not a lot longer. So unfortunately, uh, this, this, this old chap finally uh, got caught uh, whilst traveling and died a horrible death even though like I said the pilot was apparently very cautious and and being uh, taking a lot of time in terms of uh, uh, between jumps and things but uh, this group from Pepto Helmeted Warriors seemed like they were very very committed to uh, keeping track of this uh, this super capital as it was traveling. Okay uh, then I'm just going to finish off uh, with uh, raw calls and ratting supers uh, so once again, 12 raw calls in the last week. So the number comes to be, seems to be holding steady at the moment in terms of the number of whaling kills. Only one ratting super though, and obviously this one, which I've just mentioned now, so that's two total, uh, were destroyed this week. So ratting supers was uh, super quiet. So there you go. So that's all from me this week. Uh, not too much going on, as you can see. But still some news, as always. There's always something going on Eve, right? As always, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications. And uh, hopefully I'll see you on my Twitch show on Friday at 2000 UTC. And if not, I will see you here next week for next week's episode. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.